Today I'm going to talk about the cost of planting cover crops in a no-till system as opposed to the tillage system that we were doing before that. Okay, when I talk about this, I'm not going to talk about all of the aspects of it. I'm simply going to compare the tillage system that I was doing prior to 2014 compared to the no-till cover crop system that I'm doing now. I'm not going to take into consideration any other factors than the tillage and the cost of doing that as compared to doing the no-till with the cost of the cover crop seed included. The reason I'm going to approach it that way is because I don't want to bring into this analysis anything that can be debated. The cost of the tillage I can set hard numbers to. The cost of planting the cover crop seed and the cover crop seed itself I can put hard numbers to. So I can do a direct comparison between those two things. The reason that I want to do it that way is because I constantly have people ask me when I talk about cover crops is, do you get a payback from the seed? How do you cover the cost of the seed? Because I have to pay for the seed in the cover crop system. And that's an added input. It's an added expense that goes into it. And rightfully so, farmers want to know where they get that money back. So that's how I'm going to address it. So a little bit of a history lesson here. Prior to 2014, we were in a system where on about 50% of the acres of this farm, we would do fall tillage, which in our case was an inline ripper. I'll show a picture of that here. That's what one of those looks like. That's not our particular inline ripper, but it's one very similar to it. That's what that operation looks like. And then it, after we would do that operation, we would go across that with a disc and a cold packer. And I'm going to show a picture of that here uh, so that you can see what one of those looks like to smooth it down a little bit because that ripper tends to bring up some big chunks and it's not a very smooth field to go plant a crop into the next year. Then in the spring, before we planted the cash crop, which in this system would have been corn following those operations, would have been a field cultivator with some kind of a harrow behind it. And, and I'll include a picture of that here too so you can see what one of those looks like. Again. None of these pictures are the exact machinery that we have here on this farm. And in fact, I haven't used any of those pieces of equipment since the spring of 2014. And what happened was that in, uh, I became interested in the cover cropping and no-till system. And in 2014, I set apart a part of the farm that I did a strict no-till, no fall tillage, no spring tillage, and just planted corn directly into it, directly beside, in the same field, a, a, a portion of that field that was in our usual regimen. And the no-till with the cover crop actually out-yielded. Now, I had been working up to eliminating the tillage off of this farm in the first place because... The research that I had done led me to believe that that was the way to go, but I hadn't been able to prove it yet. But in 2014, I proved it. So the last tillage of any kind that was done on this, that has been done on this farm, was in the spring of 2014. The last deep tillage that was done on this farm was in the fall of 2013. Now, that deep ripper that you saw, the price per acre of doing that is $20.45 an acre. Uh, the numbers that I'm going to use for these operations is from the Ohio State University's aggregated cost of custom farming 
for the year of 2016. They interviewed 325 or 350 farmers. I don't remember which, but they interviewed over 300 farmers that do custom tillage work, which means uh, another farmer hires them to come in and do that, that work. And the numbers I'm going to present are the averages of what they charge for doing that work. The reason I'm using those numbers is to eliminate my personal bias from the numbers so that uh, the custom numbers supposedly include the cost of maintaining the equipment and fueling the equipment, the labor to operate the equipment, and the wear and tear on the equipment. It's an all-cost included situation, so I'm going to use those numbers so I've got a dollar-for-dollar -dollar comparison that can be translated across to any farm anywhere in this neighborhood so that I don't have any bias in it. That's why I'm going to use those Ohio State custom numbers for the farm work. For the deep ripping, the number is $20.45 an acre. For the disc and cultipacker packer following that, it's $14.15 an acre. Then for the field cultivator in the spring, prior to planting the corn, it's $13.55 an acre. If you total that up, that's $68.15 an acre. And because I said that under our previous program on this farm, 50% of the acres got that treatment every year, I'm going to divide that by two so it's spread across all acres for every year. And if I divide that by two, I come out with $34.08 an acre. So on any given year, $34.08 an acre was dedicated to that tillage that we did on this farm. Now, the program that I am under now, that I have adopted since the spring of 2014, is a no-till, which means I don't do any tillage anymore. I only plant seeds. And, and I do herbicide applications. We did that under the tillage operation, too. I'm, I'm, I'm going to address that in a couple of minutes at the end of this. But I don't do any tillage anymore. I just plant seeds instead. And what that means is that after every crop comes off, whatever the crop is, after each crop comes off, I plant some kind of a cover crop seed into it to grow during the fallow years when there's not a cash crop growing. So every acre on this farm for the last two years has had a cover crop planted on it. Every acre, whenever there was not a cash crop growing on it, it's had a cover crop growing on it. That's why I divided the cost of the tillage by two because that was 50% of the acres that got that treatment, so I divided it by two so that on any, any given year I've got a cost representative number. So all of the cover crop that I plant on this farm, instead of doing the tillage, I put in with a grain drill, which is a planting tool. Uh, farmers know what a drill is. People that are not farmers may not know what a drill is, but it's, it's, it's a planting implement that plants seeds on a very close row spacing. In the case of the equipment I have, it plants it on eight inch rows. Uh, it's, it's basically a solid coverage of seed. According to those same Ohio State University figures, it cost me $16.75 an acre to run that drill. The seed that I apply, if I average it out, uh, some I plant mixes, I plant some straight varieties of seed. It depends on what the preceding crop was, what the following crop is going to be, and what the soil conditions are, what I plant into it. But if I take all of the seed that I planted in 2016 and I average it out across all the acres, it comes out to $17.50 an acre. So if I total the $16.75 for the drill and the $17.50 for the seed, that comes out to $34.25 an acre. So I didn't run my calculator across this yet. I'm going to do it right now. If I take the 34.25 and take away the 34 and 
$1,208, 17 cents an acre. It cost me 17 cents an acre more to put the cover crop in under a no-till regimen than it cost me to do the tillage. Now the question that I always get asked that I was that I alluded to at the beginning of this video is does the cover crop seed pay for itself? Where do you get the money back from the cover crop seed? Well, I haven't done anything else but eliminate the tillage and add in the cover crop seed and within 17 cents an acre I've paid for the cover crop seed. One of the arguments that I'm going to get is, well, yeah, but you have to spray extra burn down herbicide in the spring to kill that cover crop. And that is true. The acres that I would have planted corn into under the tillage regimen, I wouldn't have a burn down herbicide one because I would have used the tillage to knock those weeds back. But under that tillage regimen, it's common in this area, and I was doing it before I switched to this program. I would have applied a fall herbicide to knock down the fall annuals and the winter annuals, things like dandelions and mare's tail. I would have applied a fall herbicide application to knock those weeds back going into the winter, which I don't do now with the cover crop application. So my spring burn down and that fall herbicide application knock each other out that's out is it better to leave it lay bare and let it get wind erosion and water erosion and carbon burning off out of the soil or is it better to leave it covered and let the roots grow which feed the biology in the soil which creates the organic matter in the soil tilt that you need i'm not going to make that argument in this video I only wanted to address it costs this much to till it costs that much to not till and put in a cover crop those are the numbers that I've given you if you found this useful at all click the like button click the subscribe button if you have comments that you'd like to make I'd be happy to hear them I'll answer any of them that make sense to me or that I think I'm qualified to answer have a good evening